Yeah, good morning. I'm going to be as short as I can be because, to tell you the truth, I don't like sitting on these trees here, under these trees in the road breaker. They got a lot of boas, you understand? And <laughs> anyone on for long on me, boy. The thing is this, um, education you know, starts on real low levels. And I'm going to explain you why. Education starts in primary schools, kindergarten. It don't start in secondary education. It don't start in colleges, certainly not in university. It starts on lower, the lowest levels. That's where we start educating ourselves, learning about life. So now, a lot of these politicians, they believe that elevating themselves by whichever means possible to put themselves on pedestals and not be able to live a normal life to ask people on lower levels their opinions is where you get stuck the country will get stuck because a lot of people on lower levels have more information than you believe they have and here is a little bit of what I'm trying to say. With all the education that we have collectively, we fail miserably, miserably. We fail to consult with each other for fear of somebody else showing us up or knowing more than us because we want to know as much as possible or if not we want to be the best well all of you who been involved in fighting crime that's the topic this morning all of you who involved in fighting crime fighting crime neighborhood watch crime this uh, getting together to form clubs or to form organizations to battle crime have failed in the past miserably and uh, I'm going to be posting and rerunning programs that were implemented people that were brought together to fight crime and look what happening on our island crime high I just read the break in some jewelry store I think there was Shiva's and they continue to hold up grocery stores and continue to commit these crimes well thank you for joining us we're going right into the program crime prevention task force and also neighborhood watches stay tuned Mr. Flan, I want to thank you first of all for accepting our invitation to be on this evening's program. Uh, Mr. Ferrier and Mr. Gibson, I would like to thank you for responding to a very sharp notice and invitation to be on this evening's program. This evening, Mr. Flan, we'd like to find out from you a little bit on the Council of on Crime Prevention. When did this first start? Well, actually, uh, first of all, let me thank you for inviting me on your program this evening. And I do hope that I can contribute a little to crime prevention on the island. It started actually in 1979, when as uh, a member of the JCs, I brought in here Gary Hill from Nebraska. And he gave us a report on the crime situation here on our island. And from then, I have been involved uh, and crime prevention on the island for those years. Uh, the crime or the council on crime prevention, is this something that is a local body of uh, people working together and has this been something uh, initiated by the uh, people of St. Martin? First it was a, a private initiative and then after a year or two government uh, appointed a committee to follow up on crime prevention in the Netherlands Antilles 
as a whole. Some of the members, uh, I have here a piece in front of me that says uh, and is dated the 5th of September 1984. Uh, the members were Mr. Benvillon, Mr. Larmany, Mr. Ruloff, Mr. Havertong, Mr. Brown, Daniel, and Mr. Hudge. How effective is the Council on Crime Prevention at this moment? Well, this, this committee is, is dormant uh, at the moment, and this is due to the fact that the lack of cooperation from the authorities made us uh, pull back and uh, relax on this. Ben, for many, many years, and I remember uh, Bryson and myself, we were talking to you on the crime situation on this island and ways and means of combating crime. A lot of other people were involved. The JCs, for instance, were very much involved in this. Uh, in those years, how did you look at the situation in St. Martin? Well, uh, I saw the situation where crime was increasing. As we grow and progress on the island, crime is also going to increase on the island. And that's why I started with this program in the hope that we will get the whole population aware of what will take place in the future where crime is concerned. And I'm happy at the moment to see where, again, another initiative has been taken to combat crime on our island. Mm -hmm. The Council on Crime, on crime Prevention, uh, you mentioned that in one year you brought a person down from Nebraska. How effective was this in those years? Well, he, he had uh, the information from the United States and he compared the situation here in, in St. Martin. Uh, for instance, he told us, he said, if I was uh, a criminal, he said, I would choose your island because it's like a, a haven for organized crime on the island, and he was right at that time. And uh, he gave us some uh, pointers to start out here on the island uh, with that. And that's why we got interested in crime on our island. Mm -hmm. Have you, uh, in your time, contacted districts on the island? If so, which ones of, uh, of those districts? Yes, when we were very active in the, in the beginning, we had our neighborhood watch at uh, Pelican uh, Keys, and we had at uh, Guana Bay area, we had those established. And if you drive around, you might be able to see this sign on some of the poles and on the premises of some homes at Guana Bay. Mm -hmm. Question is, of course, uh, pertaining to the crime task force, you gentlemen have been working very hard, and uh, we have read very good items in the media about the crime task force, the work they're doing. So I'd like to uh, first direct this question then to Mr. Ferrier. And that question is, is the task force linked in any form to government? None whatsoever. Not at all? None whatsoever. We have read in the uh, media that uh, there will be an increase in officers on the island. What effect do you think that will have on crime on the island? Well, the immediate effect we um, foresee uh, that it will heighten the um, visibility of the police force on St. Martin. And um, with that, um, there's a lot of people out there, we believe, that are not really uh, uh, out to do bad, but because there's no control and there's seemingly no uh, um, police out there, they do things that they may other otherwise not do. And the 20 police officers not only will strengthen, uh, strengthen the police force in all the tasks that they need to perform, but immediately we will see more police officers. So we'll have a more visibility, a higher level of visibility, and that we think is one of the most important things right now. One of the things that uh, we here on Profiles of the Water Islands have to really thank the, time, the Crime Task Force for is for really getting the increase in officers on the island in that uh, it was mentioned <coughs> many times uh, by some of the ministers that they had no money in their budget to uh, get uh, an increase in officers on the island. So we want to thank you very much uh, for getting us the additional uh, officers that we really need on the island. Well, I, think, I think we need to straighten out something there. Um, the Crime Task Force <coughs> um, served more as a, you know, pressure group in other words to make things happen 
some of these things, such as getting more police officers, were supposedly already in the pipeline. Um, we just um, expedited things, and we believe that um, uh, our presence, our, our actions, have, have led to speed up the process. And it's <coughs> something that um, we're very pleased about, but I don't think you can say that we are the ones that, that created the more, more police officers because we're not the magicians. We didn't play hat tricks here. Excuse my voice. Okay, Mr. President. Mr. Gibson, uh, the Crime Task Force is in full swing. First of all, <coughs> let me um, excuse uh, Keith Franca, who is also an executive committee of the Crime Task Force, but because of the short notice, he could not make it here as quickly as both of us could. <coughs> yes, I talked to Ben um, about it because uh, he has been involved in this field before, I think it was 1982, and um, invited him to come to one of our meetings. <coughs> Uh, you may not know it, but the Crime Task Force consists of uh, approximately 18 members. One of the members who was in a committee has sat down with the group, <coughs> has contacted him specifically in the area of attempting to gather information because Ben has a lot of experience in that field uh, relative to f the formation of neighborhood crime watches. So the connection comes from that point. It is also read that you have contacted the Dade Police. Why was this done? The Dade, Miami Dade Police was contacted in order to be able to get information as to how to go about in setting up a professional neighborhood crime watch. The Miami Dade Police were the ones who directed us to an organization who was charged with this in the Florida area. We thought of doing that because um, if we embark on it and do it, we would like to do it as good as possible and we need to draw from experience of other people elsewhere in the world um, in order to be able to implement uh, similar programs here. Mr. Vaughan, have you uh, sent those documents that they have requested from you uh, yet? Uh, not as yet because I wanted to use them for this program and now, uh, during this week, I will turn them over to Mr. Walter Kieser. Mm -hmm. We see also that the Miami-Dade Police is getting involved in helping uh, the Crime Task Force with establishing a neighborhood crime watch. Ben, could this be taken care of locally? Uh, definitely. I have all the information uh, pertaining to uh, crime watch we have established here, but uh, nevertheless, uh, Getting outside help and expertise is always welcome here on the island. But locally, we could have handled this uh, the same way. There is no way that I can prevent myself from asking you this. Recently, in Sabre, a police officer was shot and killed. Mr. Marcus, a local, was beaten. Nothing was done. And then we had the unfortunate incident and of course, between those two incidents that I just mentioned, many more other crimes were committed to a local St. Martiners or Windward Islanders, let's put it that way. And then recently, we had the unfortunate incident of Mr. Dubourg at the Caravan Shway. What is your opinion on all of this? Well, it, it seems as if it is customary in our community that on, only when certain people becomes a victim then we get into gear. Uh, from my side uh, of this, I have never taken that attitude because I started in 79 and I went straight on. I didn't wait for a specific uh, accident to take place uh, to get into gear. And that's why we must safeguard ourselves and the future that we do not portray this, uh, I would say, favoritism that we only are going to get into action when certain people are involved. Mm -hmm. But we should have it as a policy. If we're going to set this up, we are going to do it for every individual that has been attacked. Mm -hmm. 
and not just for our friends. We have uh, received rumors that the crime task force is prejudiced and that only after a hotelier was attacked that this group of people got into gear. We have seen in the past a Marcus, Mr. Marcus on Front Street has been brutally beaten. We have seen uh, many other uh, crimes committed on the island, but uh, only as of late since, uh, and I will mention Mr. Robert DeBoer was uh, attacked, we have a group that got together. What do you say about this? First of all, I'd like to say that uh, it sounds like maybe you should not have done anything at all. It sounds like uh, sour grapes. Uh, we did not do it, we didn't come up with the idea. Now that the crime task force has come up with the idea and doing something about it, no, they should not be doing it. I think the most important thing is that something was done, work did go into it, people made sacrifices to try to bring a change. You will recall that immediate prior to the Robert de Bourque attack, there were uh, articles, and this had never happened before, appearing in a major newspaper in the United States, namely the Daily News that has a basis of millions of subscribers. Uh, prior to that, immediately prior to that, there were letters written by travel agents to various persons on the island relative to the crime situation. So there was an accumulation at that point in time where if nothing was done to send a strong message that St. Martin is not just going to go to sleep and let crime take its course rampantly, if a strong message was not sent by way of citizens rising up and saying enough is enough, that um, we would be uh, sending the wrong message. We would be uh, allowing our economy to be hurt tremendously. Um, you will also notice around that time that the majority of the crimes were of a brutal nature. They were uh, violent crimes, and they were mostly directed to the tourist trade. That's where most of those crimes were directed. Of course, in every society, and you will always have that, you will always have some percentage of crimes being committed. That is, is unfortunate, but still you need to accept in your community a certain amount of percentage of crime. When the percentage, however, reaches a height where, and I've spoken to policemen who said as far as the tourists are concerned, a high percentage of tourists that visit this island witness or experience crime. When you get that and it's going out to the outside world, you no longer responsibly could sit back and do nothing about <coughs> it. It had nothing to do with Robert de Bourque. Robert de Bourque was only the last drop that made the bucket overflow. But the bucket and what was in it is what prompted us. And that's why we received also so much support in what we were doing because the feeling was nobody was doing anything. Nobody had the creativity. Nobody would make the sacrifice of doing anything. Well, we decided we would do it and we're glad we did. Very, very intelligent move on uh, the uh, board of the crime task force <coughs> in getting this done. I, I must uh, say that it was a very ambitious, ambitious move. Uh, how would you say this would be most effective? Is it building police offices in different districts or just having a main police bureau in Phillipsburg? No, this is one of the suggestions that we made some years ago to the Minister of Justice and the Administration building to have substations in the various districts. Uh, the visibility of police officers in the districts will be very helpful, but also uh, something very important and very effective is the neighborhood watch. When you get the community involved and uh, looking after each other, uh, we call it a, a nosy neighbor, but in a good sense of the word, that we take care of you go out at night to the movie, you let me know, well, I'll be out until 10.30, uh, keep an eye on my property and vice versa. And that is very effective 
uh, all around the world. We have it that exists. It's very uh, effective. And the neighborhood watch will supplement our police force here. Out substation in different districts on the island. We have heard this many times, and it seems that we can't get this organized yet. Is the crime task force looking into this? It's part of our program. It's part of the program. Part of the program. It's part of the, 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 the demands, basically, that we, we have set out and set up uh, from the um, uh, executive council where we met with them the first time. That that need to be addressed, and it is being addressed. Uh, we've also spoken to uh, uh, Minister Knappen, and um, these items, the, the substations, in fact, I can name them for you. We have requested substations in Simpson Bay, in the St. Peter's area, and in Middle Region, and uh, they will come about. Let me add to that also, Dwight, that there's actually a fourth one that will be created, and that would be a harbor police station right next to the pier, and uh, it's hoped that that is going to be in place probably in the next month and a half. Um, you recall we had this signature action, and we got tremendous support. We collected about 4,000 signatures. Um, we are very thankful to the members of the Executive Council who also signed that signature action actually embracing all of the measures that we were suggesting, <coughs> including those three substations. They're necessary, uh, they must be in place. Curacao has substations being built throughout the island. We still have one main station. Substations must come. Uh, if we may, at this time, talk a little bit about auxiliary police force. What is the task force doing about some uh, Again, auxiliary police force was part of our original program. <coughs> what we uh, were able to do was to get again the executive council of St. Martin to um, to agree and, and pass uh, what would you call it? The slow resolution, the resolution um, whereby they have um, agreed to institute and to finance and have set up a auxiliary police force. They have hired two professionals in this field, one being Mr. In uh, former Inspector of Police Locadio and um, former um, um, Sub-Inspector Monsanto. And those two gentlemen are in far stages right now of actually setting up the auxiliary police force. In addition, Funds have been set up by our um, executive council to fund this auxiliary police force. And again, we're very thankful that they have acted as fast as they have. And um, it is a matter of fact right now. Uh, from what we understand, um, the recruiting is starting shortly or has started already. <coughs> and also, uh, we, have now, we now know that the actual training of the auxiliary police force uh, will take approximately three to four months. And from all indications, within the next five to six months, we should see an auxiliary police force on St. Martin. With this auxiliary force, do you think that uh, it would help in the crime situation? Yes, uh, any involvement in crime prevention will be a help and we should uh, put ourselves positive towards the, the institution as a task force. Tune in next week for the final episode on our programming pertaining to crime prevention that was shot in the past. We hope that something will be done or more will be done in terms of crime on the island. The saying is that the youth are a little bit out of whack because it appears they ain't got nothing to do and now they're committing crimes and they're looking for a situation where they can help the youth well all you had to do was ask Dwight what he know about that and as usual in my archive of documented programs 
around St. Martin and St. Eustatius, especially them two islands. I have what is called in 2007 Boot Camp 360. And the St. Eustatius government in them days came together and they said we have to, too many youth who are finding themselves in the hands of the law, prosecuted, etc. And boot camp was established. Um, here on St. Eustatius, the youth are getting a treat. And when I say a treat, it's because they are finding themselves in the hands of the law. And there are people here in the justice chain who are doing their best to help these youth, to avoid them, to fall in the hands of the law and to be termed criminals. Watch this. And this is called boot camp for this summer. Stay tuned. Hello, I'm uh, Arjan. I'm uh, teaching uh, the children how they're uh, going down with a uh, rope from the mountain. Um, I'm, uh, I help the Marines for uh, the climbing uh, part. And I go uh, down um, for learning uh, afraid. So they are not afraid for highness. And so when they, uh, when they go down, they are proud she did it. Okay. So that's the yeah, important reason. Go, 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 Okay, up you go, up you go, up you go down. Go down. Okay, let's go. Lean back, let's lean back. Let go. Yeah. Rex. Come, yeah. Rex. Lean back. Lean back, lean back. Remember, lean back. Let's go, let's go. 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 And this morning, I asked them what they're going to do. They told me they're going to scale the walls. And um, they tell me I should come. I told them, no, I'll do something easier. But since I see them here, and I got the instruction, I did it along with them. I think that's good. Still quite some youth in you then. <laughs> <laughs> well, wh whoever's leading the youth have to have some, some youth in us. That's right. And I think um, it's very good what they're doing, those that are volunteering their time. I see some people from the VKA, some from the Marines, and so on. And it's very good. Long time we have been asking Astasia to start a, a boot camp for our youth and that people took the initiative. I think Mr. Timber was be, uh, Mr. Sorry about that, Mr. Fleming and other persons were behind of it and it's really nice to see it happen on Stasia. Hopefully the others will pick it up. Seeing the youngsters this morning um, jogging from dreams to come to here by the fort, um, it really gives you a lift in your heart that there's still hope. No matter what people think about our youth, no matter how tough they're having it, if we put a little energy and a little trust and a little interest, they will do good things for us. Thank you much, Commissioner. Thank you very much. Punches are coming from the chin, like a cat. We have with us uh, Chief Inspector Look. Uh, there are some young folks rappelling today, but it's a, it's a program that is called what? Uh, we call it Camp 180 Degree. Camp 180 Degree? Camp 180 Degree because um, the last couple of months we have encountered some problem with some youths. So we decided from the justice chain to do something about it before it get, let's say, more out of hand, so uncontrollable. So that's why we, the four of us, put our heads together and this idea of the camp was born. Uh, Mr. Winston Fleming has downloaded as much as possible from the internet about the boot camp. And uh, we adapted it to our system, to our needs. And for therefore, we had also contacted the Marines to help us with this program. So and actually, we have the Marine from Aruba assisting us. We have also the Coast Guard from, from the Netherlands and Tales assisting in it, my officers, and also the FECA Air. And this is what, discipline, or is it just um, we try keeping to, them busy, getting them off the streets? We, we main focus is to discipline them. 
because you know that if they get in trouble with the police is because of lack of discipline, lack of obedience at home and also at school. So it is a combination of, um, yeah, how the youth get themselves into problem. They're claiming most of the time they have not much to do and this vocation is a good time to show them, give them some incentive, show them there's things to do, things we can do. We choose for the military system because there you can create the perspective of discipline, self-discipline, and also we try to create some self-esteem, the things they're going to do the, um, that will help them to be pride, um, pride of themselves, proud of themselves, mm -hmm. and also that the community see that, hey, from these youths you can still achieve something. After the boot camp, we hope that they, when they go home, they will continue and the parents also will continue with what we had tried to do of had um, win out of these youngsters. Is this going to be for the duration of their um, school holidays or is this just a few days and then that's it? Um, no, we're not intended to leave it at a few days. We choose to do three weeks out of the summer vacation so they have some time for, the, for themselves and the parents. And then the rest of the vacation from this school year, we're going to have them come in for the week of vacation they have, and we will continue with the program. But also during school days, we will try to see if we can get them to come to the camp again, and so we can brush them up and remind them what they had learned during this past three weeks. So then I take yeah. it that it's an ongoing event? It will be an ongoing event, and we hope that next year, we can repeat this camp also. Thank you very much. Okay. Well. Lean back, lean back. That's correct. Lean back, lean back. Lean back, lean back. Don't, don't put on your foot yet. Lean, keep on slacking, keep on slacking. Keep on slacking. Keep on moving. That's the way you gotta go down. Keep your, keep your right hand to the back, all the way to the back. Christian. Yes. And stay like that. You gotta lean back more. Up, yeah, you're not leaning back enough. Go back more. Don't, don't, don't drop your feet yet. Lean back. This is the way you gotta go down. Okay, open your legs and go down. Good. Straighten up your body. Yes, that's the way. Now you're talking, cadet. Lean back. You still drop your body. Don't drop your feet. Keep your feet there. Go back. Go. Stand up straight on the wall, not like that. Drop your body first. Go back. Keep your body like that all the time. I don't believe it. I don't. Mikey, why you take me to camp? Hey, when something went on, man, you look like a Marine. Were you in the Marines? Yes, I was in the Marines a few years ago. All right, I see you there boxing with the guys a little bit. What, what is that all about? Well, actually, it's therapy, you know? Get the anger out of them. Lead them, you know, fight with each other, not in the face, you know, more or less for the bodies and so right. forth. So you're not, you're not teaching them to fight? We are not teaching them to fight. Okay. It's uh, more or less to get the stress out of them. Well, what stress are you talking about? You know, the little children, you can see that they, they are keeping anger inside. So you uh -huh. get it out by doing some boxing, sporting, different things. So what's the program all about then? Well, the program is more or less to turn the youth around 180 degrees from the direction they are heading in. We from the justice chain, we are of the opinion that it's necessary to do that because the youngsters from 10 to 15 already are finding themselves in problem with the police. Okay. You know, for doing all kinds of different things and we want them to stop so that later they do not become criminals. Mm -hmm. So we want them to look at life from a different perspective, mm -hmm. see things different and go in a complete different direction. Is this the first time or are you going to continue doing this? This is the, the first time, actually the first time in the Netherlands and Tilly's that uh, there is such a boot camp, the first time, and it's our intention to continue doing it every vacation, except the Christmas vacation, that time is fine, but um, in October we're going to have another camp for one week, and in February again, another week, but it's an ongoing process, we're going to do it all the time. All right. I saw some, uh, some of them scaling the walls, police, vacayers. What's wrong with you? You don't know how to climb a wall? <laughs> <laughs> no, I know how to climb a wall, but I, I am here to make sure and coordinate, make sure everything goes fine. Oh, you're part of the coordinating team? Yes, okay. of the justice team, that's right. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, too. I'm saying this to say this. A lot of people sitting up high. And the higher you go, 
the longer the fall, the longer the scream, and the harder the impact when you reach ground level. So climb as high as you want. Remember, nothing stays up. Everything comes right back down. And our resting place is the lowest that you can go. You can't go no lower than six feet. Unless they dig a grave a little lower for you because your ass were too wicked. <laughs> and even then they don't go lower than six feet. Anyhow, I you have a good day. <laughs> Enjoy the children. Share with them. Youth. Or you take the reins in all your hand from these people who are thiefing and doing what they want with all your assets and properties and funds. They're out to make themselves and their friends and family and their business partners them rich off of your assets, off of your well-earned and deserved heritage. Or you get together, election in station in March, a lot of people running after position and money. In station too, yeah, <laughs> they're grabbing that position like crazy. Say Martin, I've been knowing that for decades. That's what they're doing, grabbing, fighting for position. Anyhow, God bless. Take care of yourselves. And remember, listen to them children. They're wiser than you believe.